don't know whether you have heard people say talk is cheap. I am here to say talk is not cheap. And you don't have to look very far to actually know that talk is not cheap. You just have to know of people that have been wounded almost irreparably out of words that have been spoken. Marriages, for example, that are broken because people speak to each other in a very ungodly manner or in a very hurtful way. And if you just crumbled a piece of paper and then tried to straighten it, uh, you will find that you never get it as smooth as it was. And that's exactly what happens when our words are not seasoned with salt or with grace. Sometimes it is what we say to our children that will mark them for life. You tell them that they are useless and they come to believe that actually they cannot be achievers and in this way you compromise their capacity to achieve. But we need to be careful because words are important. In the book of James chapter 3, we find that first words can direct. James uses the example of a bridle that is used on a horse or a rudder on a ship to say that they are very small things but they turn the horse or they turn the ship. In the same way, he is telling us that what we speak, of course he's talking about the tongue, but the tongue as an organ is uh, neither positive or negative, it's out of what comes from the tongue. And he is saying that our words can direct. And you can use your words to direct people, to give them encouragement, to give them counsel. And in that way, it is used positively. And that is not cheap. But secondly, James, again in chapter 3, says that the same tongue is like a fire in the world or it is like a deadly poison from wild animals. I think he was thinking maybe of a snake. And in this, he is saying it can destroy. It cannot just direct, but it has the capacity to destroy. And that's what we have seen, that many times we allow our tongues or our talk to destroy other people's lives. And God would have us change that so that we use our words more to direct rather than to destroy. But James is not done. He has a third aspect. And he says that words can delight. And he uses the example of a spring or a fountain that, uh, uh, that produces good water and refreshes people. But he also talks of a fruitful tree. And he says the tongue can be the same. It can delight. You can speak words that bring consolation, words that build people, words that refresh people, especially people that are wounded. When you speak to them, you can take them down if you choose to be destructive or you can choose to delight them by encouraging them. Somebody who feels that he is useless and you speak to them and encourage them and build them and tell them how you know gifted they are because indeed they are gifted, then you will be bringing delight to them. So what will you use your tongue to do? Are you going to direct people or delight them and delight, uh, delight them because you could do those two which are positive or are you going to use it to, for destruction? Many, many times we use our tongues for destruction. But I would pray that God would help you as he helps me uh, to, to actually use my tongue positively and to be a blessing to others. That our tongues will be used to bless, not to curse. Our tongues are not going to be used for scandalizing people or even gossiping about people, but they will be used to speak words of comfort, words of peace. And this is what God desires of us. So take time and consider what I have said and choose from today that you're going to use your tongue to be a blessing to God's people and indeed to all people that are around you so that you will delight them 
or you will direct them, but not destroy them. God bless you. See you next week. Thank you.